major recruiting mistakes that student athletes and families make in the recruiting process? Yeah, a great question. It's probably the, the most important thing that, that we work with our clients with is helping them to avoid those really common mistakes. And, and they're really simple concepts. Probably the biggest one is to target schools above their ability level. So they see the schools that they've heard of, the schools that uh, go on the, the ticker at the bottom of ESPN, and, and those are the schools that they target, you know, that they want to go to Notre Dame or Alabama or Texas or Ohio State. And they don't really have an understanding of, uh, you know, the different levels uh, of play in college, and, and they only target those schools. That's a, a major uh, mistake that they make. Uh, probably just as common of a mistake is that they only target a couple schools. You know, they'll target two schools and then they'll have maybe a third school to look at a little bit. And the problem with that, if you're not a student, if you're not an athlete, that's okay. You can have a reach school, you know, the school you're looking at, a safety school, you can probably target three schools and be okay. If you're an athlete, because it's so competitive for each of these spots at the college level, you can't target three schools. You have to target, in some cases, as many as 300. Not only do you have to be able to get into that school, but that coach has to want you as an athlete and then that, that they have to have a need at your position, they have to have a financial aid package for you, and then you have to beat out 1,500 other kids that are looking at that same spot. So what you want to do is the same thing that the college coaches are doing, and that is um, they are targeting a lot of kids for one spot. You have to target a lot of schools. We would tell our clients, you know, if you want to have 10 schools make you a financial aid offer and that's what you want you want because you know if you're a buyer and that's what you are you're a buyer you want to have options you want to have different people that are going to make offers to you so you can drive the price down by getting the best offer so let's say you want to have 10 offers you need to have maybe 50 people recruit you to get those 10 offers you know actually take interest in you and to get 50 people to take interest in you you might have to start with 500 wow. because not every school, uh, no matter how great, you know, if moms and dads are listening, no matter how great your son is, um, not everybody's going to like him. And, and that's, you know, just part of the recruiting process. Is Another common mistake that families make in the recruiting process is to have a false sense of security. It's maybe another word for having a big ego. This might include thinking, well, I got a letter in the mail from a school, so they want me, so I'm set. And if you've been a college coach and you understand how college coaching really works, um, you'll know that getting a letter in the mail doesn't mean much. It's one part of the process. It's usually one of the first parts of the process. But that letter is going out to thousands of other kids. Um, maybe that means that they want you to come to their camp and they just want some camp money from you. Maybe that means they just want to gather some information. They want to get your video so that they can watch it. Um, maybe they're a, a school with a JV program, a, a tuition-driven school, and they just want your enrollment dollars. Uh, true story. I got a, uh, I got a 60-pound boxer, and that you know that 60-pound boxer gets letters in the mail from college coaches because we have her in our distribution database, and she'll get letters. Hey, Hadley, we uh, <laughs> we really we really like you as a prospect for our program. We want to take a look at you this summer. You know, please wow. come to our camp. You know, it's 575 dollars. So. Wow. Obviously, that letter, you know, it's great. Getting letters is better than not getting letters. It, you know, it's better than um, n nobody knowing who you are to begin with. You know, at least they have your email address. At least they have your mailing address. You're getting the letter. But it doesn't mean they're making you a scholarship offer. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of uh, area in between that. Other things that athletes do and families do that are, that are kind of big mistakes, um, expecting somebody else to do it for you. You know, we hear this a lot. It's, well, my coach is going to, you know, get some coaches to come to open gym or my my club coach says, you know, we're going to go to this big tournament this summer and all these coaches are going to be there. You have a game of your life and a, and a coach uh, just happens to be at that game of a school that you happen to want to go to and they happen to like you and they happen to have the right need at that, ex that same time. That happens, yeah. And it also happens that people win the Powerball. It just happened last week. <laughs> so it doesn't mean that just going to an event and hoping to get recruited is a good recruiting strategy. Just like buying a Powerball ticket is probably not a good investment strategy for the future. It could have happened, sure, it's great, but um, if you're relying just on that, uh, you know, you're, you're probably missing the boat a little bit. So those are some of the major concepts of things that a lot of families make mistakes on, and our role is to help them, you know, try to not make those mistakes.
Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.